Guelph. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And it's my pleasure today to support the, the private member's bill that's being brought forward by my friend, my colleague, my neighbour uh, down the way on federally funded health research. This study will be focusing on lowering drug costs, but also looking at increasing access to medicines both in Canada and around the world. Like my honourable colleague, I too have noticed that there is a knowledge transfer problem in Canada. In the House of Commons Standing Committee on Industry, Science and Economic Development, we've heard similar testimony to what he's presenting on the problems around intellectual property. The issue currently before us in the House is a symptom of a much larger problem. I support this study because it's the first step to addressing a problem, which is admitting that there is a problem. And this problem may affect the health and well-being of hundreds of thousands of people around the world. Intellectual property is relied on more and more to protect the fruits of service economies such as ours. However, a cumbersome and outdated IP regime can in fact make it even more difficult to protect intellectual property. Worse, it can stand in the way of life-saving medical services. Mr. Speaker, perhaps the most worrying example of this problem is in regards to the recent Ebola epidemic in Africa. As the member, of Kitch member from Kitchener Centre has mentioned in his speech, Canada played a large role in developing a vaccine. Yet due to an intellectual property dispute with an American company who purchased the commercialization license from the government, the vaccine sat in laboratories for months when it could have been saving lives. This is why this study is so important. It's because of, it's about more than knowledge transfer. This study is about saving lives. We all want to see each investment the government makes reach its fullest potential, especially when it applies to investments within health sciences and research. But it's particularly a, a tragedy when taxpayer-funded medical research sits on the shelf unused, when, in fact, this IP should be flying off the shelves. Not only should this research be available to Canada, but as the motion states, it should be accessible around the world. Mr. Speaker, the University of Guelph's Health Sciences Program is an increasing draw from students from across Canada and, in fact, from around the world. Many people don't think of Guelph as a centre for health research, but when you put it in the context of health of animals and vaccines that protect animals from diseases, it starts making sense. Guelph has done this for over 190 years. With many of these students, both graduate and undergraduate, that are studying at the University of Guelph, they're working at the Centre of Cardiovascular Investigations to learn about the human heart. They start with looking at hearts of smaller animals and then they apply their studies to the human heart. The CCVI was developed to find innovative ways to fight heart disease. They receive funding through grants from numerous sources. These include the Heart and Stroke Foundation, the Canada Foundation for Innovation, the National Sciences and Engineering Research Council, and other sponsors that are essential to support the great work of the professors and students working in this area. To name just a few examples of the incredible medical research going on at the University of Guelph, Jeremy Simpson's work studying heart failure symptoms that apply to women differently than men. I recently in, visited his lab and I had presentations from his researchers on what they're doing around heart disease and looking at the gender-based uh, differences between heart disease in women and men and what they're doing to actually help women to survive heart, heart conditions that up until now thought were the same as heart conditions found in men. Dr. Petrick's lab is focusing on novel therapeutics for the treatment of late-stage ovarian can cancer. And again, it's a hard cancer to find. It's found in women that have, have ovarian cancer that um, is, is very difficult to, de to detect. But this, the research he's doing is actually almost at the breakthrough point. He is collaborating with researchers in the States and around the world, and we're hoping that he breaks through soon so that we can end this terrible disease that affects so many women in Canada. Professor Glenn Powell's laboratory uses molecular research to treat heart failure. I could go on and on, but there are a lot of examples of the type of research that could significantly increase benefits to the public. 
and all to say that the brilliant research being conducted in my constituency of Guelph and across Canada must benefit Canadians, but also help people around the world. It would truly be a tragedy if any one of these research projects were to run aground because of difficulties on IP regime or funding or other barriers to access to market. It's our responsibility to address this problem. Whether the cause is a lack of awareness about IP, which is often the case, or bureaucratic licensing disputes, no medical breakthrough should sit idle in a lab when it could be in saving or improving life. This serious problem is at the centre of the Honourable Member's motion and should, if approved by the House, be a central issue for the Health Committee to study. I'm proud to say that this government has already shown leadership on this issue. Canada recently became the 20th country to accede to the Marrakesh Treaty, allowing the treaty to come into force. This treaty aims to bring the global community together to better address growing demand for published materials for those with print disabilities. Mr. Speaker, with proper funding and protection, Canadian intellectual property could contribute just so much more to the world. Canada has a proud tradition of leadership in the field of medicine, from doctors Banting and Best who developed the life-saving insulin to treat diabetes, to William Penfield who developed a surgical method for treat treating epilepsy that's known as the Montreal Procedure. We as Canadians can be proud of their work. If Canada is to carry on in this great tradition and remain on the cutting edge of medical advancement, we must revisit Canada's intellectual property regime. We in this House owe it to Canadians and to the world to make sure that life-saving medical advancements are available to those that are most in need. I'd like to express to my colleagues, constituents and stakeholders that this motion is not about assigning blame or fault. This motion is about making the most of Canadian ingenuity and innovation in the field of medical research. We can't accomplish this goal by pointing fingers. We can accomplish this goal if we harness the unique strengths of businesses, governments, universities and colleges. Each has a role to play and each has strengths to contribute. It's my sincere hope that the Health Committee study initiated by this motion will bring together all these stakeholders and suggest some solutions to this growing problem. A new strategy to streamline Canadian medical IP is what we're looking for. Mr. Speaker, as my speech draws to a close, I'd like to again thank the member from Kitchener Centre for putting forward this important motion for debate. His experience as a pharmacist and the work that he's done in helping the people of Kitchener Centre will now continue on to looking at broadening the scope to all of Canada, in fact, looking to help the world. Canadians are rightly pr proud of the health care system, which itself depends on research and discovery. I implore all my colleagues in this House to support this important motion so that the legacy of Canadian medical innovation and advancements can benefit Canadians, the rest of the world, and Mr. Speaker, I'm very pleased to present uh, my support to the member from Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Sarnia.